my little mommy to ride. When the doors lift up, it's a suicide. It's just you and I, she on her thug's pride. You know the vibes, thick thighs and Gucci slides. Bag to match, she the baddest of the batch. Always have a figure back, I put the house on that. Touch you in the places that you like. You know my body, I'ma freak you right. We ride it down, just mine. They might, oh baby, gotta get you home with me tonight. Yes, welcome to Vigor Radio. If you don't know, I'm your host, Sean Kahn. And that song was Ooh Baby, featuring Marquis and Just Real off my project, The Wrath of Kahn, which you can get exclusively on SeanKahn00.com. Make sure you get it there because you can get it nowhere else. And um, this is Vigor Radio. And we have an in studio guest today, my first. In studio guests, Miss Laura Cons is in the building. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. What's going on? How you doing? I'm great. How about you? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Um, definitely. What we want to do is we want to give you a a nice round of applause. We have to give you a round of applause. Uh, thank you for for being on the show. Um, I love what you do on Instagram, and um, I'm going to get into that first. That's the first thing I want to touch on because, you know, everybody has dilemmas, you know. (laughs) Everybody has dilemmas, and uh, you definitely, definitely are great at handling people's dilemmas. They have dilemmas. Who do they go to? They go to law for their dilemmas. So um, tell me a little bit about how you started with the law I got a dilemma situation. So we're in quarantine. I was in a relationship and there were certain things that were going on that just weren't sitting right with me. Mm -hmm. And I would sit in my head and I was like, am I crazy? Is it me? So I said, I'm going to take this to social media. So I used my friends. I was like, oh, my friend's got a dilemma, but it was really me. And that's where it started. Just... I guess using the platform is like my way to voice what I was going through. So, oh, very nice. And um, I'm going to tell you from my point of view, it was um, something that people can relate to. So even because we all go through these situations, you know, and as you were, you know, talking on your situations, so many people could relate with what you're saying. So that's a great way to to reach the people. Um, I know for sure this law, I got a dilemma, is, is just going to just keep growing and growing. It's a great thing. And, you know, I'm tuned in all the time with it. I really like how you do it. You know, Thank I really you. think that you should take that into a segment on your podcast if you're not already doing that. Um, and then what we're going to go into now is your podcast. Tell us a little bit about your podcast. Um, it's called The Laura Khan's Experience on YouTube. It was... It came out of quarantine. Um, I was, like everybody, going through all this craziness, sadness, and definitely stopped doing the things I was doing prior to um, quarantine. And I was like, I got to talk to people. I was like, I have to pick everybody's brain. Like, how are you you dealing mentally? How are you getting back to the things that you love? Because for me personally... I lost everything that I loved to do prior. And I was like, I got to just pick brains. So I started reaching out to the people that I was watching during quarantine, which happened to be music people. I was watching Pretty Lou 
um, Monkey Wrench at 3 o'clock. So whatever I was doing, I stopped, jumped on live to do that. At 7 o'clock, I have um, I have a friend who's a DJ, Ryan Vandal. He would do his live. So I was like reaching out. Well, Pretty Lou, Pretty Lou, I reached out to you. You got you to gotta get on with me <laughs> if you're listening. Um, but Ryan Vandal, he was gracious enough to sit with me and... It just it it snowballed and it led me into interviewing people in the music industry. So it's every 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 episode is just a little bigger, a little bit higher in the chain of music, the people that I'm speaking to. So it's been a very, very cool ride so far. Okay, and, and, and that's incredible. How long have you been doing your podcast? It's pro- almost a year. Okay. It's almost a year. Almost a year, so it's almost the anniversary time for the podcast. Right, right. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Well, listen, I would love to come on your podcast. Love you know, that. Yes. I would love to do that. I like what you're doing. Thank and you. now, um, what I want to speak on as well, because you know, you're well versed in so many different things. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fashion world. Uh, you know, and um, and the salon and and just the hair industry as a whole. How did you get into that? So I've been a hairdresser for probably, definitely over 20 years, and I I love it. I'm passionate about it. I've had my own little space. I'm currently renting. um, I'm renting a chair in a salon right now, but even that too, um, mentally coming out of quarantine definitely jammed things up. And even recently with this no, the new variant. it just slowed things down for the business, but yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people are scared to come out. You know, right? Women, women are petrified. They're yeah, like, you yeah. know, oh, I can't do it. But um, yeah, so that's that's interesting because you know it is like business in New York City is definitely having a, a, a freeze on the just the industry as a whole, uh, barbershops. Hair yeah. salons, nail shops, you know, um, they took a big loss with this pandemic, you know, um, and, and it's unfortunate. Um, but now you're a New Yorker. Um, I'm a New Yorker. You're a New Yorker. All right. There we go. <laughs> Bronx. Now, what, yeah. What we're going to do is, no, we're going to start <laughs> off and give you a round of applause again oh, for you. being my guest. <laughs> Let's get that round of applause for Laura Kahn's. Thank you. <laughs> laugh at myself on that one. <laughs> Laura Conth is in the building, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> you're a New Yorker, and um, you're from the Bronx. The boogie down, baby. Uh-huh. Well, I, hear, I see this. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Luce would love that because he's from the Bronx, so you just put the X up. You just made his know. day. Know. Birthplace. That's yeah, it. birthplace. You made his day. Tell me what it was like growing up in the Bronx. So I grew up in Morris Park, um, Italian. My paisans in the house. Shout out to the paisans. The paisans, uh, Italian. You know, all Italian neighborhood. It was great. It was a lot of um, community. Everybody was together. Um, I remember being like eight years old. I grew up in an apartment building, and there was a big empty lot across the street. And every Fourth of July. Everybody from the building came outside, and they were cooking, and, you know, the pasta's going, the meatballs are going, the wine, and they would blow fireworks off across the street in this big lot, and it was just, it was great. Like I said, you felt, I always felt safe, like I was in danger, there was always somebody looking out for you, um, yeah, store owners, everybody, it was, it was, it was a, it was a great childhood. Well, that's incredible. Um, there's a movie that I always think about because, you know, the Bronx, of course, home of hip-hop, uh, where it was created and everything. But there's a film that I love so much, A Bronx Tale, right? Yeah. One of my favorite movies, you know. Um, and it, it, de- it depicts all the cultures in the Bronx. You know, it's just like it gives you a real vision of how the Bronx was back in that day. Yes. You know, so such a great film. And, you know, I watch it many times, you know, um, De Niro's incredible, you know, uh, everyone in the movie is incredible. Robert De Niro's one of my favorite actors for sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so 
big up to the Bronx. You know, I'm from Queens, and 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 me, and my man, the loose right here, the kind genius. Uh, we always have our little Queens and Bronx thing, you know. You know, the rivalry, you got to keep it going. For yeah, sure. you know, you got to. I always tell them, Queens sold the most records. He always say, well, the Bronx started it. That's hey, it. That's it. You know, pop. Yeah, and that's it. it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it, yeah. <laughs> it's New York City, so all boroughs are great, you know, and we keep it in the love area for sure, for sure. Um, now, definitely... Uh, I want to talk to you a little more about your YouTube um, because I see your fan base growing. You know, um, people seem to love you on YouTube, you know, and everything that you're doing with your dilemmas, you know. Um, when did you really start with your YouTube page and, and, and seeing the growth and people starting to pay attention? So I maybe about two or three months ago. Well, I'll be honest. Um, I interviewed Cuban Link and... I didn't realize who he was before I interviewed him. And then that kind of gave me a little traction. It made people look and see because, you know, Cuban link. Definitely. Um, he was so gracious and great to speak to. But with him, I just said to him, I was like, look, I don't want to focus on all of the things you've spoken about for the past 20 years. I want to know about you. Like, I want to know about your childhood. I want to know you know, things that were pivotal to you. Like, he was a big chess player as a kid. Like, there were so many things that I don't think a lot of people knew, if they care to know, because I know he's he's got a little bad reputation out on the streets, but all right, we're going <laughs> <we're gonna laughs> to let that one go. Yeah, well, you know, hey. Yeah, but, you know. Terror squad. Right. Yeah. I feel like everybody everybody deserves a second shot. Um, So I feel like that really gave me gave me my street cred <laughs> okay definitely well you know shout out to cuban link you know uh best friend of big pun yeah. who is one of my favorite mcs of all time yeah. you know um i would say between him and eminem the lyrical ability between those two guys are impeccable to me bar for bar those guys are just the greatest but now that we're speaking about music what kind of music did you grow up listening to and what what kind of music do you listen to now like what's your your style of listening music listening pleasure so, growing up, I was definitely into heavy metal. Van Halen, Leonard Skinner, Ozzy Osbourne, um, Led Zeppelin. And can I just touch on, mm -hmm. I was just listening to Van Halen, because I was like, I have to go back. Eddie Van Halen, I mean, I love hip-hop. But that, that guy on that guitar, I mean, you can't beat that. Like, where is that music? Where, like, why isn't anybody doing that today? Anyway, so my first hip hop song that I heard was um, Rob Bass, It Takes Two, mm -hmm. and I was hooked. Okay. I never went back to um, never went back to Led Zeppelin. And, oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. Well, it's great that um, because music is a beautiful thing. Um, shout out to all the heavy metal artists that you spoke on. You know, me growing up, just to speak on music myself. Yeah. Big fan of Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald has one of the most incredible voices ever to me um big fan of groups like toto from australia yes. yeah, toto i love toto um i was into madonna cindy mm -hmm. lopper um the bgs the bgs Bee Gees Gees. is one of my favorite he knows yes. that yep. yeah the bgs yes. are some of the greatest songwriters ever ever mm -hmm. um you know he's always i always played i love the bgs you know so i'm well versed in all forms of music um but those are some of the artists that i really gravitated toward as a child growing up, you know, um, and hip hop, of course, you know, I'm a hip hop artist myself. Right. Um, grew up listening to hip hop. Shout out to the big homie LL Cool J, uh, one of my inspirations. And also, you know, he, he definitely looks out for me. You know, we have a commercial on um, YouTube for Sony. He called me out to do a commercial with him. Uh, he had a project with, doing with Sony and Grandmaster Flash was there. So it was just a great experience. His album, he's got a new album that's getting ready to come out soon. I'm excited. You know, I'm excited for that too. That's the goat right there. So I had a big, you know, shout out to Big Homie. But as far as who started me wanting to rap was Redman. Redman is incredible, right? Redman is, he's the artist that I love because he was comical, mm -hmm. hardcore, lyrical. He had all the dimensions. And I said to myself, wow. 
I want to be like that, you know? Yeah. So are there any musical artists that just take you, you know, whoever it may be? I know I know Eddie Van Halen is incredible with mm. the guitar, but is there someone that you can just put on and it just takes you to another world? So recently, I just started listening heavy to Mary J. And I don't know, I think I heard a song and I just was like, you know what, I got to hear her, her albums. Like, And I was so touched by her words because normally when I listen to music, it's people think I'm nuts, but I never listen to the words. I'm always listening to the music. It's always the beat. So like a big thing for me when I was growing up, um, I was my boyfriend at the time, he had these big fucking speakers, woofers in the trunk of his car. And when you heard that bass hit, it was insane. So for me, that was always, I loved the bass. I loved the music. So now I just started listening to Mary, and I really started listening to her words. And I was like this. Like, I felt, she went through some shit. Definitely. Definitely. I, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. And it's like you just, and I felt it, like, right in my heart. And so she definitely is, she got me in my feels, my girl. She really, she put me in that space. So. No, no. Um, shout out to Mary J. Her pain, and, and with artists in general, um, there's certain artists that their pain and their feelings just come across, mm -hmm. and you can feel them. Mary J. Blige is one of them. Of course, Tupac was one of them. Oh, DMX as well. These are artists that are so transparent with their music, you know, so it's like you feel what they're saying because they're speaking real. They're not fabricating things. They're speaking on their life and their experiences, you know. Um, there's a lot of artists that make great music, don't get me no wrong. Doubt. But it's a difference between you can feel somebody, because there may be somebody like that's more lyrical, this, that, and the third. But if I put on a Dear Mama or So Many Tears, changes. you know, changes, these records are world-moving records, you know. And Pac was great. I'm not going to say he's the most lyrical artist of all time because he's not, you know. But you feel him the most. Same thing with DMX. I'm slipping, falling, can't get up. Yeah, definitely. Um, right. Right. These, these kind of songs are just things that, that human beings, period, can feel. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to all of them. Um, same thing with Michael McDonald. When he said, I keep forgetting, and when he also said, uh, when he was with the Doobie Brothers, you know, the song, the, the what he would speak about, because him and, um, he was a great songwriter, you know, um, and still is to this day, of course. But like I said, it's, it's, it's not even the genre of music. It's just how you can feel the artist. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So shout out to all the artists that put their body, their mind, body, and soul into their music because this becomes something that you will never forget. And no matter what age you are and what generation you're from, you can relate to it because you can feel it. No doubt. I have changes still on my playlist. And it's crazy because you listen to those words, it's still today. Unfortunately. Right? Unfortunately. How, how old is that song? Is it 20? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's got to yeah. be around that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's also, um, who else? I was listening to... Um, fight the power. Oh wow! Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, public I'm sorry. Public, public enemy. enemy. Yes. I mean, yes. I was heavy into public yeah. enemy, and at the time, listening to the words, it's like you're like, yeah, right. I, I kind of get it, but now listening to the words, it's a whole different it hits, ball game. Yeah, it's wild. It's a whole different mm -hmm. ball game, and this is what I mean by music. Like for instance, there's a song that came out before all those records. As far as hip hop is concerned, it's called "The Message" by Grandmaster Don't Flash and yes. the Years. Because we close that, to the yes, that edge. song to um, this day. Shout out to Melly Mel. Lose yeah. that head. <laughs> Those words. <laughs> What he's speaking about, broken glass everywhere, yes. people pissing on the streets like they just don't care. Everything that he said in that song, to this day, you can turn that on now, and it's just like the current events of what's happening right, today. Right. That's you sad, know. though. It's very you know. sad. No, it is sad. sad. It is sad. Um. Oh, on Vigor Radio, we do like to speak about a lot of different things. And there's one thing I want to speak about just out of curiosity, because this is just something, right? Yeah, out of curiosity, <laughs> right? Um, because something I thought about the other day, sometimes I ponder about certain things, right? And I just want to get your take on this. You look up into the sky, right? And you see all these wonderful stars, 
you know, it's just beautiful. They got the constellations, all this great stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, in school, in science, which was one of my favorite subjects, in science, they let you know, oh, those stars, those twinkling stars are suns. Like, yeah, those are suns. Just like our sun is a star. But to us, it's so close, it's the sun, but it's a star, right? So now, this is my theory. Here, and our sun is a star, but it warms our planets, this whole solar system, and all this other stuff. So what about all those other suns and stars? Are there not planets with beings on them somewhere? What's the deal with that? I don't know. Well, you, I don't <laughs> even know. I mean, this extraterrestrial stuff, I don't know how I feel about that. I can't lie. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm spiritual. I, mm -hmm. believe, I believe in entities. I believe that I believe in all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know about ETs yet. Mm, Can't lie okay. to you. Okay. I'm on. I'm a little on the fence about it. Okay. No, we we don't know. We don't know. But like I said, I just ponder because I'm saying to myself, are those stars for our viewing pleasure? Are those stars something that has planets around them? Because scientifically speaking, they're there. Right. Right. And when you see the ones that are twinkling, that means that they faded out, and all you're seeing is light years of light that just is gone, but you're still seeing the light from it. Right. That's why it twinkles, you know. Right. But the ones that are not, they're still active. All right. So wait, I have a question for you. Oh, okay. So now, if there are extraterrestrials out there, what do they think of us? Are they know, saying uh, these dumbasses? What are they I fucking think, doing I, I now? I do think they probably look down upon us like, gee, these guys are so, so violent <laughs> and doing? so crazy. Right. Like, you know, because not for nothing, when I was about 11 years old, me and a few of my friends on my block, we seen something in the sky that was not an airplane. And I don't know what it was, but it was moving at one pace, then it stopped in the air, turned the other way, and it zoomed off. And this is, I'm 11, all my friends were sitting there, and we were like, what is that? Yeah. It was unexplainable, you know. So don't get me wrong. I'm very spiritual as well. I believe in the higher power, and I, I, I'm, I'm very blessed to be here, and I pray and meditate every day, you know, and I'm blessed for doing that. And it does bring me, I do understand that what we think and what we feel creates our reality. You know, there are some books that I read by Jerry Nesta Hicks called Asking is Given. Yes. You know about that? Oh, my God. <laughs> what an incredible book. That book changed my life. It really did, you know. But... So, you know, those are touchy situations because we don't know. It's not like I can say, okay, next up, I got my man, the alien from this planet. It's just not going to happen, you right. know. But I always think to myself, what if? And I'm into comic books, okay? And, of course, I watched the What If series on Disney+. Plus. Big comic book fan. Love I it. think I'm a superhero in real life. I really be thinking sometimes. Lose no. I, I act like I am a superhero. I, I grew up <laughs> reading comics. Um, You know, I want to be a superhero. Like, you know, it's the greatest thing. But, um... Definitely, definitely, this is great. You're my first guest. Thank you. You're incredible. Thank you me. are Miss Khan's. I'm Sean Khan. It's like, I wow. Know, I saw that. <laughs> you well, know? people say to me, they're like, are you a con artist? I'm like, no, I just shortened my last name, <laughs> you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, and and um, they say the same thing to me. You know, they say that I'm a con artist. Mm -hmm. Or are you a con artist because you're Sean Khan, right? So, it's funny. But, definitely, what I want you to do is I do want you to let everybody know where they can find you on YouTube, on Instagram, and anywhere. So, on YouTube, it's The Laura Cons Experience. On Instagram, it's Official L Cons. And you could check out all my dilemmas there. All your dilemmas. All my dilemmas. <laughs> Shout out to the dilemmas. Everybody has a dilemma, and you do a great job. Like I said, I'm always tuned in, Thank you know, you. and it's just so cool because you said, a friend just called me and said, Law, I got a dilemma. And then you get into these subjects. It's incredible. Everybody that hears this, that sees this, make sure you follow her. She's incredible. Thank you. Once again, I want to thank my very first guest, Miss Laura Cons. Thank you. Can Appreciate we get, you. Can we thank get a round of applause? You. I appreciate you. And what we're going to do is we're going to get into another record off my album, which is called The Wrath of Khan, which is out right now. And a matter of fact, what I'm really going to, I think what I'm going to do right now, because being that I have the kind genius of Loose here, right? Song, You're here, song. Loose. Guess what? You produced something on my album. You produced two records on my album. I did? You sure did. <laughs> you sure did. So we're going to get into the song called Always 
featuring Grizzy Hendrix and your cousin Heat. That's hot. That's Let's hot. get into that record. This is off the Wrath of Khan, right? This is off the Wrath of Khan. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Let's go. Oh. 